My guest this week is a much-loved TV presenter who's now turned her hand to children's books. Connie Huck made history as Blue Peter's longest-running female presenter. I don't like it! Since then, she's co-written an episode of Black Mirror. For everyone! Fuck you! Launched a podcast, and now she's just released an acclaimed children's book. Please welcome Connie Huck! See you. How are you? I'm good. This is nice. It's all right, isn't it? And these, these are real. I thought this would be like set. No, no. And like not bona fide newspapers. Actual this is papers. Proper. Yeah, I gonna... could start taking it apart and reading old news. <laughs> That's mad. I actually thought. Did you think this was real? Or well, you knew? I didn't. I love it. We've had I so mean, many like, guests. I've never had somebody instantly sabotage the set of you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm well, so rock and roll. That's I like you. No, Do you? That's nice. I'm... I like you too. Well, the reason I like yes. you particularly is oh. um, I've, uh -oh. I've met you at a showbiz party, and what I loved about uh -oh. it what is... What did I do? Well, you were, the, you were the only person that spoke to my wife. Oh! Because my wife isn't famous, and everyone was ignoring her, and you went, hey, I'm Connie! What I you... know the party you're talking about, yeah, yeah. and your wife is a doctor, and she's... You're punching above your weight, it has to be... <laughs> yeah. Seriously! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's very lovely and very interesting. Say yeah. hi to her, I really like her. I will her. say hello to her, yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. So, a lot of people may not know that you're married to Charlie Brooker. I am. Of uh, Screen Wipe and Black Mirror fame. And there you go, yeah. there's a few people like that. Yeah. Um, and, and you actually co-wrote an episode of Black Mirror together. Yes, we did. We co-wrote 15 Million Merits, um, which is all about a society in which sort of people um, they all live in these giant sort of high-tech, almost like gymnasiums, because they sort of pedal to generate units of currency or electricity to power everything. And they inanely watch TV screens with light entertainment on. Um, and, yeah, it's all to do with this sort of, uh, a sort of reality show. It's kind of like an X Factor or yeah. Britain's Got Talent style show. And what was it like writing with uh, your husband? Um, basically, it was really good because we, you, you can roll out of bed and just write it at home without having to go into an office or write it in bed and, you know... Have um, you done that? Um, that would no, be amazing, I was going to say. Yeah, we're always writing in between the covers, coming <laughs> up with ideas, but... but uh, no, I'm sort of curious about it, like, do you, do you have a squabble? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, just overthink... So, I don't know, like, I think... I like to think that... Cos it's quite... So weirdly, it is a hard episode, but it's quite soft with the love story and yeah. stuff like that. I like to think that a woman's touch has helped bring sort of softer elements to Black Mirror. Cos we live, eat and breathe Black Mirror in that house, because there's always one being cast, one being edited, yeah, one right. being, you know, so it's like a treadmill. And writing is a really collaborative thing, and often he'll be stuck on a plot point or this or that, and we'll discuss things, or, or even just weird things that happen, like, I don't know, when we, got, when we got Alexa before, and, like, our kid came in the kitchen one day and went, uh, Alexa, I mean, Daddy, and we were like, oh, no, this is the beginning of the end when your child is mistaking you for Alexa. And talking of kids, you've just written a children's book. I have, yes, I have. It's called Cookie and the Most Annoying Boy in the World. The main character, she always feels like a bit of an outsider, she's a bit other, she sort of feels like she doesn't quite fit in. And so this new kid moves into town who she thinks is the most annoying boy in the world. But actually, as you learn, annoying is subjective and is in the eye of the beholder. Um, and so basically, it's just sort of about, you know, the things all kids go through and adults as well. Jealousy, love, hate, annoyance, <laughs> stuff like that. Is that based on your life? Kind of. If it's purely about me, it'd be really boring, so it's like me on speed. Or not on speed, but on... <laughs> oh, I came out. I'll tell you what, I cannot imagine you on speed. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a caricatured version. Right, OK. And she's called Cookie. Yes. And you're Connie. Yeah. What's her surname? Hack. <laughs> Is it really? Is it really? <laughs> Fantastic. So she's called Cookie Hack. <laughs> Love her. <laughs> Did you try out any of the book on the kids? Do you know what? And my seven-year-old... Did, seven -year -old did they give you feedback? Yeah. 
literally giving me notes. I don't think you should call it that. You should do that. Take that character out, do this, do that. But actually, he gives good feedback. I always say the kids know better than the adults. Right. Because the adults go, oh, that's really great. And the kids are like, well, it's gone over their head or whatever. And my seven year old, he's, he says it's not nepotism, although he doesn't know the word nepotism. But he says it's not favoritism within the family. It's his favorite book. Uh, right. So there you go. Anyone? Yeah. Oh. Well, I love the fact maybe he's doing that with Charlie as well. That's my favorite yeah. Black Mirror. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Yeah, playing us off against yeah. one another. Um, and also, there's no filter. You can't get them to lie on your behalf. Mm. If you're, because they just um, will tell on you all the time. Like, the other day, our son went to Charlie. You are the worst dad ever. You're the worst dad ever. And Charlie went, no, I'm not. Joseph Fritzel is. <laughs> Oh, there's more? Go well, on. there's more in that now our son has taken to whenever he's annoyed with Charlie, he goes, you are worse than Joseph Fritzl. <laughs> <laughs> Do not say that in public. So, are there, because there's, what I love, there's one mm. specific part of your life that's in the book when you've it's failed... quite a lot of them in there. You've failed miserably on blockbusters. Oh, oh gosh, it was so embarrassing, yes. I, I, went... didn't, I didn't know this story, it's wonderful. Yeah, I went, while I was at school, I went on blockbusters, it was really exciting, whole school tuned in, everyone ready, like, oh, going on blockbusters. Didn't get one question right, didn't get to a gold <laughs> run, came straight out. And history repeats itself. Since having kids, you know that thing of baby brain? Uh, I went on Celebrity 15 to 1 and same thing, two questions wrong, out I came. And I'm like, I'm never doing quiz shows ever again. <laughs> well, we've got a clip of you when you're on Blockbusters. Oh. This is fantastic. Now, you've appeared on television before, haven't you, Connie? Uh, yeah. Oh, come on, Connie, when, when was it? Um, it was on Blue Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're rather hesitant about this. How long ago was it then, Connie? Oh, about, oh gosh, I don't know, two years ago or something. Oh, it, it was after you apparently met me at some fate at a school. And that was when I was four. <laughs> when you were four? Yeah, something like that. Oh, well, Blockbusters was going about that I time. sat on your knee and you gave me a lollipop. You didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I gave her a lollipop. <laughs> I mean, it's true, in a totally innocent way. That's yeah, funny. but you can see the sweat on him go, what? <laughs> hey. Did you notice how I speak with a very BBC accent? I, yes, I did. Hello. <laughs> um, I'm so old. What was, but, your, yeah. what was your mascot? Because they always used to have a mascot yeah, on Blockbusters. I don't remember. Was it in that? I'm not sure. I couldn't see one. Because that's yeah. what I was curious. Because they were maybe that's where I went wrong. Because I got no questions right, as we know, and came out. <laughs> but I always just thought didn't be, do the mascot. The best mascot would have been to have like a miniature Bob Holness. <laughs> and then when they With get a what, wagging head. But what's your specialist subject? And you go voodoo. <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> start stabbing him, see if you can bend him around. <laughs> do you ever? Do you ever? Obviously. You know, I remember you from the days of Blue Peter. Do you... Do you... Don't say that you grow up with me. Cos that would just... Uh, you know what? All I... the time, people come up to me and I think, oh, I'm the same age as you. I perpetually go around thinking I'm in my 20s. Yeah. And so my peers come up to me and they go, I grew up with you. And I'm like, no! And I got, a, I got an invite to my 20-year school reunion the other day. And I was literally so into I was like, this can't be happening to me. That only happens to those people in American films that go back to the small town they grew up in. And the really, the saddest bit is I can't even say that was this year. That was about five years ago. Uh -huh. Now I'm going to get my 25th year school reading. Did you go? Soon. No. I you didn't go. I'm not on Facebook or anything. I'm actually like, I'm just such a homebody. I hardly that party I saw you at was probably like one of the only things that I've been to in a decade. But you were having a good time. Yeah, I, I make up for lost time. Yeah, that's time. what I mean. It was like. I'm not, I'm not talking about Peppa Pig. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But what was it like, kind of working on Blue Peter? Because I like. It seems so fiddly to me, I mean, like, like sticky back plastic and you've got to do... I, all that. I did Taskmaster and um, basically I, I had to make a parachute out of a plastic bag with like string and a spoon and you better do it in 20 yeah, minutes. Yeah. And genuinely, I was just couldn't get it. <laughs> and in that moment, I understood why Richard Bacon did coke. <laughs> like it was that thing of just going, it, it, it just... <laughs> ah! And yeah. I, was, I was curious, were there ever moments like that where you were just like... It was hard to kind of, because there's kids and there's animals and you have to be nice. Oh my God. I nearly did kill um, a hamster once. We were at the, it was terrible, we were at the 42nd Doncaster Small Animals Roadshow, where these people come. I know it. It was Toby Beach. <laughs> no, 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 yeah. no, and um, I was holding this hamster and uh, the sound man was just miking up the other person. We were getting ready to do the interview. You always have to hold the animal. 
and it bit me really hard. And I just went, ah! And like, it, it went into slow motion, this hamster <laughs> flying across. And you have this big crowd of people watching. All see, animal all lovers. Gravita yeah, 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 all animal lovers, because they gravitate to where the cameras are. And because the sound man was just miking someone up, <laughs> the boom and his cans were just there. And the hamster hit the boom. Thank goodness, it probably saved its life. And because you can, you know, it amplifies the noise, it just went, <laughs> So it hit the boom. <laughs> rebounded and then there's this horrible moment where it's splayed out on the floor like that and I had visions of these headlines Blue Peter presenter kills hamster and then it, it was just still and then it got up and ran off and then we were like thank you very much we're gonna go and interview someone else and we all yeah, scuttled yeah. off and it's like Phew. but you, you always get those moments working with children and animals was it exhausting trying to be sort of squeaky clean all the time do you know what? And they lucked out with me, because they do this interview where they're like, do you have any skeletons in your closet? You know, I don't drink, I don't smoke. What do you do in the words of Adam and the ants? Um, I'm really kind of quite straight. And I remember after I'd been on the show for years and years and years, um, <laughs> I was like, oh gosh, I've been on it for over 10 years, you know, Children have become adults in this time and I'm still doing the show. But it was so brilliant. You travel everywhere, you meet amazing people, you do amazing things. It's really hard to leave. And my friend said to me, you know what you need to do to leave? You need a scandal. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, I need a scandal. And then I was like, well, one of them's already been a porn film, so that's gone. Um, whoa, 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 you know, who's that? That was Peter Duncan. I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, Peter Duncan was in a porno. As it felt like in the audience at remember? home giggling right there. <laughs> Yeah, I can confirm that you gone. <laughs> uh, John Leslie had all his sex allegations, didn't he? There's so another that's one. that was scandal yeah. gone. <laughs> Richard Bacon did um, cocaine, so that's that scandal gone. I was like, all the scandals are taken. I could always shag one of the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Lucky to say it's not my bag, I wasn't interested. <laughs> Never happens. I love the fact that the crowd applauded. <laughs> <laughs> That would have been a way of getting fired. <laughs> Am I one of your only guests that hasn't sworn? Uh, you, you, oh, oh. you haven't sworn, but yeah. you did just say you'd fuck a dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said I wouldn't fuck a dog! Yeah, no, no. Me out of and now I've and now sworn, sworn too! Double whammy, yay! <laughs> That's fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful Connie Hart! <laughs> Listen,